Okay, whatever, however, whenever, why ever you're listening to this podcast, we're back for the second one this week. This is the Variety Hour. I'm Sergio Paradise, and here is a bloke right here. He is a recalled airbag, Titus O'Reilly. <laughs> Thanks very much. And here is I saying nice things about you to other people recently. I was just trying to think of something topical. <laughs> Uh, how are you this yeah, morning? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty good for a yeah, it was Thursday morning we're doing this one. You were on our SEN yesterday. I was talking yesterday. Talking about... Afternoon. And and somehow you got them onto failed television shows. Yeah, I, you know, because fa- failure is always funnier than success. <laughs> True. Think, and that's why well, I was on SEM. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, we talked about failed TV shows with Kevin Bartlett and Dr. Turf, and uh, we got some good callers, i got to tell you. Yeah. Failed TV shows that went all the way back to... Uh, um, Holiday Island with John Blackman and the Mick <laughs> Malloy show that was axed after eight episodes. Yeah. And probably our favourite one was Warney. Remember Warney's Tonight Show? Channel no. 9? A few, wasn't not the, that not the miniseries. No, no. Just three or four. Well, probably it was probably longer than that, but it wasn't that long ago. Warney had his own Tonight Show on Channel 9. And it lasted four episodes. I'd forgotten about that. They tried to turn him in. It, was, it wasn't like a variety show. It was more of a, a chat interview show. And they tried to turn yeah, him right. into Michael Parkinson. Only he's not Michael Parkinson. He's warning. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got lots of great, great calls yesterday. Oh, that was Failed a TV show. shows. Gee, Wa- so Warney had that. And then there was the miniseries Warney that never got off the ground. Yeah. That, yeah and then there was the... Warney the live tour that never got off that the ground as well. Uh, there was also uh, Warney the Foundation. The, the Warney Foundation, yeah. <laughs> when, I, mean, yeah. I think it, for, he, he does cricket well. Yeah. yeah <laughs> stick to cricket and stick to commentary. Uh, we want to thank all our supporters. Um, we've been banging out the podcasts. We did three oh. last week, three the week before. A couple this week. A couple we week. I think we're going to do another one tomorrow with Francis and Danny. Oh, okay. So we've got that happening. So it's all happening. That's the thing. That's why we've sort of expanded it to have more people so we can rattle them off and uh, people keep saying, how come you blokes only ever do two? We did four on Monday. We're not always going to do four. We just did that yeah. as a one-off because four is a lot of people we yeah. know on a podcast. Yeah, I'm not sure I can probably make it tomorrow. Been a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a bit too close to the weekend for mine. Uh, to be thinking about work. So thanks to all our supporters. Um, I should mention also uh, the Comedy Festival, uh, Melbourne International Comedy Festival, just a month away. It was yeah. this month. So it's the 1st of oh, it's March. March now, isn't it? Yeah, 1st cool. of March. So it starts the 28th or 29th? 29th of yeah, okay. March, I think, the Comedy Festival. Well, you better get onto it. I know, I'm starting to get ready. I'm starting to limber up. So, you know, I've got a hat. Yeah. That's oh, the main well, thing. There you go. Um, you go so bump. I'm doing well, the Imperial bump. Hotel. So Where's that? That's, that's it's up on Spring Street, kind of Spring Street. Oh, and I know. Yeah, up there, it's a great pub. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. So yeah. it'd be fun. They've got oh, these rooms oh, upstairs. Lots of pollies hanging out up there. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, state politicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're always a good audience. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Comedy Festival takes over Melbourne for about a month, and then I'm off to Sydney for the Sydney Comedy Festival, and uh, there's interest. We'll, we'll go to other cities too, so planning all that. So Whether, whether they have festivals or not. Yeah, if it, festivals yeah. or not. Like, <laughs> go to... Um, uh, what are the, some of the Fringe Festival in Adelaide? I think oh, that's I, already been on. Everything in Adelaide's on in March yeah. now, right? It's on now. Everything in Adelaide's Fringe. <laughs> Whether it's festivals or we haven't had you back Adelaide <laughs> no. for a little while, so it's nice to get you back in the saddle. Yeah, uh, we should uh, m- begin the show by mentioning Mick Fanning, uh, three-time world champion, uh, surfing champion, uh, and the man who once punched a shark. Yeah, uh, and not Greg Norman. <laughs> he, 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 Fanning, he could have won, been the world champion for forty-two years in a row. And still only be remembered as the bloke who punched the shark. That's right. You know? uh, so he's a... Uh, he, Although, to be fair, that's not a bad thing to be remembered for. No, I mean... He's it ahead of, of most people there. It does help the, uh, you know, the bronzed Aussie, tough does, Aussie myth, doesn't yeah. it? Just uh, punching a, a great white. Um, he has announced he's going to uh, quit elite surfing and retire. I mean, do you ever stop surfing? Surfers never stop. They never stop. He didn't stop when the shark attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> he even went back... Remember it was in uh, was it? South Africa? Yeah. The next year he went back to the very same beach. And got a shark came up to him again. Yeah. Which, sharks aren't fans. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the sharks had obviously put the word out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy punched yeah, one. Yeah, what, what, that, that fanning, you know, like in the green and yellow <laughs> wetsuit. 
Keep Wouldn't that be in. enough to keep you away? Yeah, oh, you'd if you think knew so. he was going to hit you? You would think so. Actually, that footage, uh, if you remember that footage, there's the bit where he sort of, he's just there and suddenly there's this splash and you see him thrashing. And yeah. then he actually, a wave comes along and he actually, the camera is, he's yeah. obscured by the wave. The camera can't see him for a few moments. Yeah. And, and Fanning in an interview after it said that the bit that's not captured on camera yeah. Was actually the really scary bit. Yeah. He said the bit you saw at the start was just the shark. He suddenly the shark was there and yeah. he was pushing it. But he said it got really hairy yeah. um, behind the wave. So we never. What happens behind the wave stays behind oh, the wave. You, you can just imagine. You know, you, you're you know, hundred meters out from shore, and you know. Would you ever get back in the water? Oh, I doubt it very much. I doubt whether I'd get in the water anyway. Well, yeah, I've just seen fat, someone else being attacked yeah, by a shark. I, I'm, I'm tempted not to go back in the water. I don't, yeah. We used to holiday at Byron Bay nearly every year, and then there was about four fatalities there yeah. in a row, and it was right at the beach where we used to surf every day. And I remember the next time I was up there, I was thinking, yeah, it's, the water's crystal clear and you can see in, for, for, for 100 metres, but you're still just paddling out. You thought, I'm, oh, I'm not too sure about it's this. It's not good when you're out in the, in, in the surf and you start thinking about sharks. I, I remember Tarthra up on the New South Wales coast, oh, yeah, a yeah. beautiful area. It used to be a whaling town. So it's got this old, uh, you know, sort of this bay. And on the side of the bay at one point is this beautiful old um, whaling pier. Oh, yeah. And uh, so people go there. It's got a shop there and you can sit there and look out onto the bay. And, and then a lot of people will swim from that, Platform from yeah. from that um, from the pier to back to the beach, right? Yeah. So it's a very manageable. It's a long but not yeah. impossible to do swim. And I'd done it once or twice myself. And then read in the news a couple of years ago, a woman was doing it and got attacked and got killed chomped. by a shark. Yeah. And you suddenly go, oh, oh hello. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, so Fanning. Uh, he, he's had so it's it. good that we. Mick Fanning's retired and we've made the whole conversation about us. Being so, being worried about, <laughs> paranoid about sharks. I also have a fear of sharks ever since Greg Norman's Instagram account yeah. popped into light. Uh, the other thing uh, that was interesting about Mick Fanning is, um, so he's announced that he won the, he won the world, uh, he was world champion three times. The thing that was my, really interesting about reading up about uh, him today and I was reminding myself about him is, he has had a terrible four years. He's had a rough trot. And his whole yeah. life, but the last yeah. four years have been quite tough too. His marriage has broken down. He got attacked by a shark, as we mentioned briefly. Yeah. Uh, he also um, he lost his brother. Um, he, he lost his brother in uh, December 2015. His uh, brother passed away in yeah. his sleep. And then he lost his other brother, Sean, in a car accident in 1998. Yeah. So, he's lost two of his brothers. So, I mean, he's a man that's had a fair bit of tragedy, yeah. you know. It um, hasn't been easy going. And uh, his brother, uh, Peter, who died in December 2015, that was sort of on the eve of him starting uh, the season where he could have got the fourth world championship. Yeah. And obviously after that, you can understand why he didn't go on and uh, and really do that. He says now he's just getting old and he just can't give that 100% comp, uh, sort of commitment to the competition. How old is he? 36. So, yeah. you know, that, that's, that is getting on a bit in surfing terms. In surfing terms. I don't know the age range because Kelly oh, Slater at, at, seems to go on forever. Yeah, but in professional surfing, I mean, every year there's there's a couple – of fifteen year olds yeah, that come yeah. along, or, or you know, there's some some new guy who wins the world, is a runner up in the world championship, who's who's still at school or something. Well, you know, so thirty six. You, you know, Kelly Slade has been around a long time when yeah. he was in the original Baywatch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets started in that was, a few uh, times. Well, yeah, Kelly Slade is older than Mick Fanning. He's he's in he's his forties, isn't he? Yeah, well, you know, he was he married to. He was going out with uh, oh, what was her name from Baywatch? Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. Yeah, he was, was with he? her for quite a while, and now she's going out with Julia Julian Assange. <laughs> it's a bit of a step change in life. Yeah, it certainly is. But <laughs> once again, I feel we've got off topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gary Ablett. Uh, people wouldn't know this, but he's returned to Geelong. Has he? And he hasn't he, retired. That, hasn't been any coverage of that, has no, there? No. Uh, Geelong President Colin Carter came out this week and said Gary Ablett is similar in his mind to Tom Brady and Roger Federer. Oh, there you go. Just dropping a few names in there. Uh, in that these, he the, says these people are these are people who are freaks. He's talking about uh, yeah. how Gary Ablett uh, is thirty three. Um, Tom Brady says is forty, and um, 
is still playing in Super Bowls and still uh, didn't win this year, but, you know, he's still yeah. getting very close. And he's won five and he's going to play again next season. And then Roger Federer, as we know, has just gone back to being number one. Yeah, he just won the Sportsman, International Sportsman of the Year this Yeah, week. that's right. So so he's sort of saying that Gary um, Ablett age is not going to – age will not weary him. He's right. basically saying – this. he's announced this Except in the he week. he his hamstring well, last right. week. <laughs> he just announced – he's announced this in the week. He's just done his hammy. <laughs> And Gary's been out a lot in the last two to three oh, years. Yeah. I mean, he's been out more than he's played. Now, Just wasn't, wasn't expecting him to get injured on the eve of this season. Now, the se- the second half of last year, he was just phoning in sick at GWS. Yeah, yeah. You could tell he, he just... He was just waiting to get on the plane back to Geelong. Yeah, he'd had enough, hadn't he? Yeah. I mean, amazing. So, um, do, you, do you put him in that? Or do you put him in that, like, with Tom Brady and Roger Federer? Not really, no. I, don't, I mean, he's a, been a champion footballer. There's no question of that. But these are guys who are, well, I suppose I was going to say a world sport, but Tom Brady, that's just American football, which is just a, a local sport like AFL is here. But Roger Federer, no, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be putting Gaz in the Roger Federer. The thing, the thing I think with Gary Ablett is, and I know I have a different view to many on this, but I find no real romance in him going back to Geelong. Like yeah. He walked out on Geelong to go to the Gold For Coast. The if he'd yeah. stayed at the goal, at, in Geelong, yeah. he probably would have won that next premiership. You know, yeah, at least, if not more. Like, they would have, you know, it's kind of, it's been a weird career in a way. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the whole plan, you know, because the AFL were very supportive of him going to the Gold Coast. Yeah. No doubt. And that was obviously the plan there, that he was going to lead one of these new franchise clubs to their first premiership. Yeah. And you can see they're in worse shape now than when he got there. Yeah, so, I don't think, I, don't, I think none of it was a good fit, any of no, that. No, it never, never really worked. So... It's been an interesting because it was interesting because I remember people saying, "Oh, look, GWS has spent all this money on Tom Scully, and at least the Suns went out and got Gary Ablett." Yeah. But in some ways, Scully's worked out better than Gary Ablett has. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so Scully's turned into a very good player. Um, AFLW are already in talks now on a new TV deal. Uh, this has already come around because basically it's been originally some of the women's games were the AFL paid. To basically, yeah, I was about to say they haven't had a, like a TV deal up to no. now. It's just been a an ad hoc sort of that's right. Up, you know, yeah. Have them almost like basically for free. Um, so Channel Seven and Fox Sports, um, I think, have had to wear. Sometimes the AFL have subsidised it, but I think they've had to wear some of the the costs of broadcasting it. Yeah. But therefore, it's rated quite well. So it's actually been yeah, it's been uh, a win for everyone. Been a, quite a win. And now they're looking for a, a TV deal uh, for season three. Uh, one of the good things about this is if it happens, is the flow on effects would be players would be able to actually Get have, paid. well, it would increase significantly because the one criticism people have had and or the one justification for the women not being paid that much is there's no revenue stream yeah. for, from their game. Um, with sponsors jumping on board in large amounts and a TV deal potentially yeah. in the offering, that, that kind of makes it It does. Interesting. You can't imagine the TV deal will be overly lucrative though at this stage well it's interesting because it's so getting to ratings um they dropped considerably this year on last year in the first two rounds so for fox footy for example was down 61 percent now they had some competition with aflx the winter olympics and the fact that i think they didn't launch the season very well this year it just seemed to start yeah it wasn't quite and and you look you have this enormous hype in the first Yeah, so people tuned in sure. who were never having any intention probably of ever watching it in a, in a, in a major capacity just to see. Yeah, curiosity, yeah. And then they drop off and then, you know. Yeah. But in good news, um, the uh, in the last couple of rounds, um, the numbers three, of round three and four, they've actually, they're up higher compared to the average audience yeah. um, to the ones last year. So it's actually come. Yeah. So I think with AFLX now finished and yeah. the Winter Olympics finished and actually some cr- really good games, like they some been, close, exciting games. And, and, and the Bulldogs game last week, uh, I can't remember the girl's name who kicked seven. She was absolutely on yeah. fire. Well, the, that skill level in that game yeah. was a lot higher. Was better. Uh, Carlton obviously weren't, but Car- Carlton had just... <laughs> They just play a terrible Did you game. watch last night's Carlton performance? Oh, Car- oh the JLT. The JLT. Yeah. Prin- oh. It was at Prince's Park and it was, um, it was or Icon Park as it's known now. And, and it, it was almost in total darkness. The lighting was just, terrible. Oh, it was so bad that at halftime, even Sandy Roberts was bagging it. <laughs> you know, he's called it. And Sandy doesn't bag anything. 
And then while <laughs> yeah, Sandy, you know, you've really let Sandy down. <laughs> while Sandy was bagging the the, the <laughs> light, the director, who I don't know who he was, but he's got a good sense of humour. <laughs> he's cut to this fat bloke who's just walking around the ground with a light meter, holding it up towards the oh, light. Right. And I thought, and and as Sandy, and then Sandy goes. Well, what's he going to do? There's no more lights to be turned on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need to take some people off the ground, apparently. Oh. That's the way lighting works in the oh. AFL. But, but the, the stand of the footy, uh, Carlton were, uh, were okay in patches, but they're not going to trouble the big guns this year. And St Kilda, I thought, were very, very ordinary. Do you know, one of my favourite things was uh, while I was watching it, um, I, uh, Francis Leach, who's a huge St Kilda supporter, yeah. is just texting me in his yeah. frustration. <laughs> Yeah. Of how I rough saw a couple they of are. his tweets and he wasn't happy about great. it. Yeah. <laughs> it adds a lot of fun when you're watching a team fail yeah. with someone who's a supporter of yeah. that because their comedy um, is, comes to the hill. And we're used to that. Being oh, we're used supporters. to it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, just on the, the AFLW um, TV rights thing, yeah. they'll probably just try and do a, a, a short term, a two or three year deal to see if it continues to grow at this rate, Yeah, which I think would be a bad way to do it. I, I reckon it'd be smarter if they were to try to do a longer term, a 10-year deal, say, with not as much probably up front, but it would give them more money to spread across the players and the production costs over the years while it develops rather than just trying to go for the big bucks. Well, uh, well, well one thing, the other time. thing that they could do is what Netball did, which was they actually formed a joint partnership with Channel yeah. 9. Yeah. and Channel, So Channel 9 has an interest in growing it. And... It raises money. Uh, the sales team at Channel Nine sell the sponsorship for yeah. it, and so they've got access to that sales team, and uh, that's actually worked very well for yeah. Netball. So there's other ways to do these TV deals, oh, especially that don't have days. to be yeah. the way the NRL and the. I mean, it, it used to be, you know, back in the day, even you know, it was just Channel Seven would pay this much for the footy rights, and that'd be it. Yeah, done. You know, there was. There was no separate rights for digital, you know, or digital channels or spread across paid, you know, or streaming services like there is now. So yeah. It, what it does mean now and is, is exactly what you're saying, is that there are plenty of ways to skin the cat. And so they, they, they want to do probably the smartest way they possibly can. But you're saying at a grassroots level with your involvement yeah. in local footy yeah. that young girls are now joining teams, right? Yeah. And families are so. You know, you give five years, the skill level is going to go up, but also the people interested in actually watching women's yeah. footy is going to increase. Well, so there is a bit here of getting in on the bottom floor. Oh, and- there's no question. That, that's what I'm saying. A, a sort of long-term deal would be a good idea. But sort of at grassroots level, um, the success of, of women's footy just in the last 12 months, yeah. it's a bit of a two-edged sword because in a lot of, um, and, and I'm just talking in the Melbourne metropolitan area so yeah. much, is that a lot of the local councils are now finding we've got too many teams and not enough grounds to yeah, go around. Yeah. Because where it used to be, you know, a junior footy club may have 12 sides from under 10s through to under 17s, yeah. just, just boys. Now they've got what was 12 sides. Now they've got 20 because they've yeah, got yeah. Under girls from the same thing all the way through, which is great. You've got hundreds and hundreds more kids playing footy, but that certainly means where are they all going to play, where are they all going to train. Wear and tear in the ground. It's a, it's a big issue, and it's not going to go away for the next couple well, of years. Let's bulldoze some houses. Well, yeah. That's what compulsory acquisition powers that the government has for. Exactly. We you should know. give the AFL compulsory acquisition powers. Just just give it to the state government and the AFL, yeah. and they can build an oval with sky rail across the top. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds with one stone. Well, we could build ovals in the sky. Well, why not? On you know that's one way to do it. Yeah. I like that. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it is why not. Yeah, there's it there's might, no problem with that. But yeah. uh, one thing I know you are incredibly passionate about. Yes, is Davis Cup tennis. Oh yeah, just just if you if you if you bring it up with you, 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 you go two back. hours later you're oh, still, still talking about. I still remember back. It must have been 1978. When I was sitting in a pub at Phillip Island, what a surprise! <laughs> watching Pat Cash come from two sets down to beat oh, what was his name? That little Swedish bloke <laughs> <laughs> to win the five set to win the Davis Cup. I think that was his name. Yeah, the little Swedish bloke. That was the only the only thing he ever really did. This little Swedish bloke. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've always loved your Davis Cup. 
it's well, inter- I- it's interesting though because it's not a huge thing on the. I mean, Australia haven't been great at it in yeah. recent years, but it's not a huge thing in that you read the fifties, sixties. It was a massive. Yeah. Ma- it was like the. It was on it was a- par with the Ashes. Yeah, it was a big international thing, and 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 the great thing about Davis Cup is, um, it's sort of not. It's staggered across the year. I mean, there's there's different countries and, and different sort of areas, and they play here and play there, and then. It, Finally, it gets through to a final. Yeah. You never quite know who's going to be playing. It, it's, it, it lacks something, and it's interesting because they've announced the new revamp of it, um, which is the International Tennis Federation. And you often know a revamp, but either it can sometimes be good if you annoy everyone involved in the game because yeah. if something does need to be shaken up, yeah. or other times it can just actually mean it's a bad idea. Yeah. So they've announced this uh, new way of trying to bring glamour and relevance back to the Davis Cup, and they've managed to, it says in this article I was reading, they've surprised the Aussies because the Aussies had no idea they were going to announce this. The British are sceptical of it, and the French are angry. Right. So uh, that's... Anything that angers the French can't be a bad thing. Yeah, so right? I'm listening. Yeah. It's my- <laughs> uh, the, a French uh, uh, tennis player, Nicolas Mahat, said they have just killed the Davis Cup when this was announced. Um, so what are they changing it it's to? It's a 118-year-old competition, the Davis Cup. Yeah. So what they want to transform it into is into a one-week 18-nation World Cup of tennis. Okay. So instead of being, like you say, spread out over the year in this long tournament. They do it in a week. They would do it in one location over seven days in the traditional week of the Davis Cup final in November, rather than across four weekends in February, July, September and November, which is how it currently happened, yeah. and that there would be a total prize pool of $20 million. Right. Uh, they say that uh, that would be, it's been uh, um, devised in partnership with an investment group, Cosmos, spelt with a K, oh, which okay. always worries me yeah. when anyone spells anything that's meant to be a C with a K. Yeah. I well, started to wonder what's going changing on. Changing the you know, the spelling of a, a normal word for marketing purposes is yeah. always a problem. So they've announced this. The partnership's worth three billion over twenty five years. So with this uh, investment group to, to the ITF, yeah, yeah. and uh, to do this, and uh, some have said that it's not bad. Um, like R- uh, Rafael Nadal, Andy Murray, uh, Djokovic have all said they don't mind it. Craig Tilley, who's the chief executive of Tennis Australia, said his organisation was taken by surprise by the announcement. As one of the founding nations of David Cup, we have a, we have a lot of unanswered questions. So uh, you're saying the International they Tennis Federation, told. They, uh, they didn't consult no, Tennis Australia? No. Right. Which shows you what they think of us, basically. Yeah, it shows you how much... Power of Tennis Australia wield and <laughs> That's right. World but it's tennis. pretty bad when you think about it. We're, we're a foundation nation of it, but we also have one of the four o- opens. Yeah. We are kind of a pretty central to, you and know, the We tennis. have won the Davis Cup on numerous occasions. Numerous occasions. So, um, so this means that, you know, how they're going to weight this, it gets rid of this end of it. It's sort of the... It used to be more like a home and away yeah. thing. Now it seems to just be more like a World Cup. It's just a it's tournament. Just, well, it's just becoming a, it's a, a team's tournament. Yeah. It's like the Hopman Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Only people might care about it. <laughs> Do you think this is a good idea, though? Or like, it's, it's still oh. got to go before the full board of the ITF. Uh, the, bo- uh, the, the It's got to go to, it's gone to the board. They've approved yeah. it. It's got to go to the annual general meeting Sounds in like Florida. It's a bit of a done Isn't deal. that nice? It's in Florida, yeah. their annual general oh, meeting. There's plenty of tennis courts in Florida. And it needs an approval at this annual general meeting by a two thirds majority. Oh, it sounds like a done deal to me. Um, it may look. At, it may work out in years to come that people will warm to this whole thing. But but to me, as I just said, it just sounds like another tournament to me, made up of teams. But it makes more sense to I me. Mean, like if you have, if they manage to put the money in that attracts the world's best, so yeah. you know each team has the top players. Yeah. Where it makes more sense to me is. The problem I have with a lot of sports is now they think of themselves like, you know, as content generators. So they yeah. go, how can we be on all the time? So yeah. AFL are doing with AFLX. Yeah. Um, they're trying to extend. They try and do it with the draft and all this yeah. sort of stuff. Cricket have done it like no one else. Like from the IPL to the BBL yeah. to the T20. They just, it, it, now they're over in South Africa starting today. Oh, it's, it starts tonight. Starts it? tonight. It's like 24-7 
cricket. Yeah. And the problem you have, and tennis has been the same with the various tournaments and the fact you've had the, uh, you know, the Dave's Cup and all these various other things. So to me, the problem you have with these is sports these days don't let you miss them. Yeah. You, do, you know, there used to be, I used to remember, I just love when the cricket came around, yeah. you know, because it was just summer and you hadn't seen it in years, and, and, in, and six, that, in months. And, yeah. and, you and know. all the sports used to sort of have that, I guess, respect for each other or, or they didn't compete with each other yeah. for, 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 for time or airspace or eyeballs, whereas now it is. Yeah, that, it, you it, know, it's just this they, thing. They you, want everything. You, you never, they never go away, so yeah. you never kind of go... Sometimes less is more. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it's great because you go, well, that, you le- le- leave them wanting more. Something you and I have never done, but yeah. <laughs> it's sort of much more. So, anyway, I kind of like I've this left, idea. I've left people wanting more. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of um, think at least this condenses what is spread out over, like, you know, yeah. four different months of the year all over, very hard to focus on, yeah. to just, this is one week. Yeah. And you actually, if you're really, you know, it actually is one week intense focus. You no, you notice who wins. Well, it says it's an 18 team competition now. Now I don't know how how many countries compete for the Davis Cup now. Is it 18 or is it more than that? Well, I think they've been they, qualified they, to become the 18. Yeah, a bit they like whittle it down. Is it 32 in the to the in top the, in the FIFA okay. World Cup? I think it's yeah. it's in um, and so that kind of narrows it down. So I imagine I'll have it like that. Like they'll be qualifying for it basically. Well, it sounds like it's going to happen. I reckon. Yeah, it tends to close, like, yeah. but I don't actually mind it. The idea, yeah, yeah, I, I, I remain it's, a bit convinced, but but it's not like the current one is like something that you go, oh, it's just so great in its current format. Yeah, yeah well, you never know with what's really going on in the current one. Yeah, like who's playing who, or, or who's I only who's know still when in, who's like, still out. they come out regularly to announce that Bernard Tomic won't be playing, won't be playing, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he's unlikely to be selected again. <laughs> <laughs> did this morning? Did you catch? Oh, before we move, uh, we'll just move on. To, uh, yeah. Just cover off the tennis. Uh, Daria uh, Gavrilova's came out this uh, week and defeated uh, Ma- American Madison Bringle uh, in the opening round of the Mexico Oval, one of your uh, Mexico Mexican Open, Open yeah. one of your favourite opens. Oh yeah, one of the, uh, one of the all-time great tournaments at Mexican Open. She struggled in the middle where uh, she actually had a what they're describing as a brain explosion. Um, I did see this. I how often have you had a brain explosion in your life? Plenty in, in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it said that it, it had this brain explosion uh, where she double faulted to give yeah. the break to her opponent. Um, she then hurled her racket from the baseline to the net yes. uh, as far hard as she could. And it only it said it only just missed an enthusiastic ball kid. Yeah, it was. How yeah. did they tell the ball kid was enthusiastic? Well, yeah, that, that's a good point. But yeah, the, the kid was leaning down to you know, pick up the ball, which is his job. Yeah, and she she's absolutely hurled the racket, and she Come was very close. She was very lucky; it didn't clean up this kid. Well, they say the if it had a hit the kid in the head, which it almost did, yeah. she would have forfeited the game. Yeah, oh, she she had to, would have been disqualified. But I reckon right. you should be allowed to clean up at least one ball kid. Oh. That should just be a first warning, surely. Yeah, or, or at least you know. <laughs> You, you, you can ping a ball at a ball kid really hard. I mean, that's that's done been done before. In my day, it was an honour to, to be hit in the head by, by, by a by professional pro- tennis yeah, player. Yeah, we would have been like we wouldn't have complained about it. This is where the kids these days they're soft. It's the nanny state. It's such a nanny state. <laughs> Just terrible. Uh, interestingly, knowing uh, with his usual sense of occasion and timing, uh, Nick Kyrgios quickly got onto Twitter saying that if he'd done this. He, a large penalty would have been a formality. He tweeted, I would be banned for six years and been on every paper and news channel for the next month if he'd done it. Sounds like he's it's put an idea into his head. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to Nick, I'd just uh, sort of gently warn him that, or point out that he hasn't done this sort of thing once. Yeah, That's well, the difference here. Yeah. Like, you know, he acts like he's had no... Oh, Daria, that was, that was a pretty bad dummy spit, but... To be fair, she doesn't do that in every match that she plays. That's right. Yeah. Where Nick, Nick has sort of got a bit of form yeah, for this, yeah, you know. It's yeah, not. A, it's, it's not. A, it's point. not exactly out of character. Yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> it's sort of just, you know. I like how he's sort of shocked. I'd like to make it about you, Nick. Oh yeah, I'd like to see him do it in the new revamped Davis Cup too. <laughs> Maybe ping his racket at 
Yeah. Kid from another country. Uh, did you see the Matildas play this morning? They no, took I didn't Norway. know that They took on Norway and uh, won 4 3 yeah. with uh, the final kick of the game, basically, really? with, uh, on the 94th minute. Sam Kerr had Yeah, she Sam Kerr. I think she had, uh, was it two? So she was. She's, she's scored she... more consecutive games yeah. than ever. It's the new record. She, oh, yeah. Did you see her brother? She should play in the A-League. She should be better than half of them in there now. <laughs> she does play in the A-League. Oh, in the men's A-League. In the men's yeah, A-League. Yeah, I, reckon, the... I reckon she'd be... Well, the funny thing about it is her brother came out, Daniel Kerr, uh, former West Coast Eagle oh, and, right. uh, and convicted yeah. criminal. Uh, yeah. He came out and said he'd like to see her, his sister, uh, Sam, finish in the uh, AFLW, playing right. in the AFLW, presidential for the Eagles, who are going to join the AFLW in a few years. And uh, she hit back and said, well, I would have liked to see him finish playing at the Perth Glory, but we don't always get what we want. <laughs> hey, you wonder if old brother and sister, there's a <laughs> bit of an issue there. Uh, it Maybe it the must be that... fun to slag off your siblings in pub- through the yeah. media. Well, What are they, Oasis? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, getting to our listeners. Yeah. At least Liam Galley has never been gone to jail for you know, stalking or bashing anyone, oh. as far as I know. No, probably not. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, getting to our listeners' questions. We've got a few that have not come yet. in. Uh, general Alcazar, um, not sure if he's a real general. Uh, he said, I had a strange feeling in my stomach when I heard Richmond referred to as the reigning premiers. Is this normal? Well, no, it's not normal, General. Well, no. it's not normal. It's normal we're having that reaction, but it's yeah. definitely not normal. Yeah, the fact that, that that phrase, reigning premiers, is used with Richmond is certainly not normal. And with any luck, won't be used again this year. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people, uh, you know, listening to this would not have ever had that phrase used in their lifetime. No, no. For, you know, no. there'd be a lot. No. There'd be no one who's heard the term Melbourne. No. <laughs> premiers. Reigning premiers Melbourne, no. So it's uh, it. there's not many, so it is strange. Uh, Dave wrote in, if the Saints-Blues-JLT game is called off due to bad light, uh, which, which, it is, been. which it should have been, he said, do they use the Duckworth-Lewis method for deciding who wins? <laughs> and and, and remind us, the, the Duckworth-Lewis method, that's, that's from cricket, isn't it? Yeah, where that's they decide the one where you just have if, no idea. Yeah, if it's called off due to rain or bad light, yeah. it's the number of overs bowled against the... Yeah, and no one really no understands. One Only two people in that world, Duckworth and Lewis, aren't sure about. They were just drunk and wrote down some numbers on it on a and, bit of paper, and, and so and sold the whole concept to <laughs> Cricket Australia. When when James Sutherland he too was drunk when he signed off on it. It is a worry that I know what the Duckworth Lewis method is, and it's not a form of contraception. Yeah. We should add. Um, Better than like most actual important formulas or yeah. things in life. But you can explain that. In detail. Uh, Patrick Rennick wrote in, why do we say the alarm went off when it technically just went on? Hmm. I know what you're getting at here, Patrick, but <laughs> I- I'm not sure this is the forum to answer that. But, uh, <laughs> but te- I'm imagining when the alarm right. goes off, Patrick's waking up alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the tone of that question. Yeah. Yeah, he-, he wouldn't be nudging someone saying, can you just turn the alarm off? Yeah. <laughs> just put it on snooze for a while. <laughs> Uh, Lee Saget wrote in, why don't either of you have a Wikipedia page? I'd love to vandalise them. <laughs> well, Lee, feel free to start two of them and then you can write whatever you like. And- I- I'm gun shy on Wikipedia and I'll tell you why. Um, on the Melbourne Football Club Wikipedia page, yeah. someone pointed out to me once that they have a famous fans section. Do they? And I think it's got Hamish Blake would be the most yeah. famous. And it's got Neil Mitchell. Greg Evans. A bunch like that. And then it's got Alan Stockdale, who was treasurer about 20 yeah. years ago. So it's, it's not really a very modern list in some ways. Yeah. Um, and I'd been added to it. Oh, fantastic. And uh, so they pointed out and said, oh, you've made it in life. And I said, oh, this, You're in Wikipedia. this is great. I've made it in life. And then anyway, when I was writing the book about, you know, a year later, yeah. I, got, I had to go and I was just checking a date on the Melbourne Wikipedia page and I scrolled and I scrolled past that section and I look and I'm, I've been deleted. You've been what? Someone's taken me off. Somebody's vandalised it already. And I thought, well, that's, that's put me in my place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, fame can the be temporary. The only thing I've ever f- achieved in my life. There's your 15 minutes gone. <laughs> gone. <laughs> so, uh, no, we don't have Wikipedia pages. Um, I've heard people who have set up their own Wikipedia pages. Yeah, no, I can't come And I just, I don't, you know. No. Nah. That's like blokes giving themselves 
nickname. A nickname. Yeah, as, as we've said. I think you're right. Times. It's right up there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's- editing your own Wikipedia page, even yeah. if you don't put the original up, but just editing it or whatever. Exactly. Is and it's a bit like these people on reality shows who who like to describe their own personality to you. Like, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, I'm the sort of guy who you know, I, you know, I, I, I tell it like it is. I don't care. It, 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 mate, we'll decide what sort of guy, how, how level of a dick you are. You don't. <laughs> we don't need you to tell us in advance. It is you know? true. Not many it, people in life. I find the more people talk about certain things. So if to, someone talks to you a lot about what a good guy they are. Yeah. You, they're invariably you, not a good guy. You you know? It's like the yeah. person at work that talks about how important culture is in the workplace yeah. is always the worst person to yeah. work with. And, yeah, and it's like often in American and British politics, the, the, the most pious Christian conservative yeah, family, family man values. politician, he'll be the one found, you know. By like Hallie Barnaby Joyce. Yeah. He'll be, <laughs> he'll, he'll be the one found, you know, in, in a... You know, Compromising a, a, in a brothel with some hooker wrapped in plastic, you know, wearing handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I'll leave Maybe that a bit one. too much detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Thanks, Serge. Uh, we were the- <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us all on our final podcast. <laughs> Uh, Craigie Foster wrote in, I have my Night Owls final tomorrow, which is bowls, I think, Law's bowls. Is what is the best performance-enhancing drug for lawn bowls? Oh, beer, surely. <laughs> beer. <laughs> I think any drug. Any if drug. If you're playing lawn bowls, it's time to get you're on. you're playing lawn bowls think, at night. I actually yeah. imagine the one that's used the most is some anti-inflammatory for arthritis. That's right. That keeps your, your hand steady. Was it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, curling's going to have drug. There's a blood thinning one too, which has been used in competitive lawn bowls overseas. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. It, and I always know to come to you for <laughs> keeping the finger on the pulse of the, law, the international lawn, lawn bowl scene. scene. Yeah, um, and 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 what it does, it it apparently it slows down the reaction and it gives um, you a better grip on the ball and a better feel for the ball when they release it. Right. Theoretically. Right. So I, I would get onto Did the Did you blood- find it helpful? I would get onto the blood thinners, Craig, if I was you. Yeah. So someone who's just had heart surgery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Craig, I know it's tomorrow I, night. I should but- just add, you are not a doctor. <laughs> 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 just warning the audience well, that, if you, you anyone know, actually thought like that. Those ads on telly at the yeah. moment. I'm a GP. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm Asterix. Yeah. Actor playing GP. Yeah. Uh, um, so good luck in your uh, lawn bowls. Yeah, in the night hours. Final. That should be exciting. He says tomorrow night, which actually be tonight, Thursday yeah. night. So uh, he didn't say where it is, so we can't get on down. It's probably a bit late for him to get onto the blood thinners too. If it's, on it's never too late. Uh, Andrew Byrne has uh, alerted us to something incredibly important, Serge, and uh, I'm going to get right onto this straight after. Yeah. Quidditch Australia, and everyone who's a yeah. long-term, long-term listener of the podcast knows what huge fans of Quidditch we are, yeah. and uh, Australia are, of course, world champions of Quidditch. Um, they have two sp- spots on their board of directors for 2018 that have opened up, and they're calling for people to apply. Yeah. And Andrew Byrne asks, have you and Serge already put in your applications? Well, Andrew, we're not going to apply because for this sort of thing, we prefer to be asked. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually just if while Quidditch, if Quidditch Australia puts in the call, we'll consider it. <laughs> right, but so we're yeah. not we're not going to come knocking on their door begging to be on oh, their Oh, fair board. enough. You know, um, I'm just pulling up yeah. very quickly. The actual, I actually looked at this and found out that the uh, Quidditch they do actually have this up Two on spots. their website. Um, so and you can I, apply online, you can you? can apply to be on the board of Quidditch Australia, which we all know is really just an, is just an excuse to go and junk it. Of course it is. <laughs> you know, that's basically it. Uh, you're not even thinking of applying? No, I don't want to apply. If they ring me, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to what find sort of, the... What sort of questions do you, do you ask or what sort of information do you have to put out there? I'm just trying to find it, actually, because it's... Um... It was a. It was quite an interesting read. They want someone who's got sort of a communications background. Right. Uh, was one of them. Looking up, bring up the board of directors. I, I'm half expecting it to just be pictures of Harry Potter, but it's actually not. There's a full proper 
proper board. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Of, and of, of like what, you know, these sort of boards, usually, you know, successful businessmen and lawyer types and, you know, captains of industry, top end of town. These, these are all people, they're all people who are obviously into, uh, into magic in some way, yeah, shape or form. Yeah. So, uh, um, so it's a, it's, yeah, it says up in here, there's two done. So there we are. I, I think we should run a ticket. What ideas would, would you be introduced? I think we should run on a ticket of introducing Quidditch X. Yeah, Qu- Quidditch X. <laughs> Just slightly, slightly smaller ground. <laughs> and, and have an international tournament in Hong Kong next year. <laughs> <laughs> so we could all go. So there you are. There will people right, get involved if you said go to Quidditch right, I might Australia. change my mind. I might, I might apply. It's actually a great logo they've got. It's green and gold with the Southern Cross. Yeah. And it's, um, what's the name of the, um, it's got like a little sort of, uh, what's the thing they chase? God, I, I'm, I'm oh, not. I, I don't know the official How can name you not it. know? Oh, once I get on the board, I'll make sure I'm across these sort of things. <laughs> it's, a, it's fully organised. There's a player transfer form. There's a rule book. There's everything. But it's all just made up, isn't it? Well, every sport's made up. So that's originally how AFL started. <laughs> a group of wizards got together. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Chris Edwards wrote in, now that the D's have won an AFLX premiership and a JLT game, should we just call off the season proper and give them the flag? Why not, Chris? I think it's inevitable. And having watched Carlton and St Kilda last night, they will not trouble Melbourne, saying put Melbourne down for four wins. Really? Yeah. You can't tell off JLT, though. Well, you can't. But Well, I, I reckon you can't tell how good a side is, but you can tell how bad some that a side is. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> no. No, I'm trying for David King's spot on Fox Footy. <laughs> Just meet me in the lab and I'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> we need better graphics for this podcast. Uh, yeah, Chris, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm not as confident. Uh, Chris Harry wrote in, would you rather look like Nathan Car- Carroll with the mullet in its prime and play like Nat Fife, or look like Nat Fife but play like Nathan Carroll? That's a tough one. i got to say, just, you know, and this is my own preference, I think Nathan Carroll with his mullet is much better looking than, Do you, than, than Nat Fife. Than Nat Fife. Well, it's a beautiful man, Nathan Carroll. Yeah, well, he's a fair unit, Nat Fife, as well, except the hair, the hair, the Nat Fife haircut's not doing him any favours. No. And hasn't for a fair while. It's not worrying him, though. He's still going okay. But, but I think, you know, comparing Nathan Carroll with Nathan Fife in a footballing sense, he's, he's stretching just slightly. <laughs> They're very similar players. Yeah. Uh, Red and Blue wrote in, do you think that games at Icon Park, the team that wins the toss should always kick with the light? <laughs> oh, go to the light. <laughs> go to the light. Uh, it's just basic infrastructure. It's not like this is a professional sport or anything. No, you wouldn't have thought so. I mean, what after the, what happened last time, wouldn't they just have moved the JLT game yesterday? Yeah. To the afternoon, like how it wouldn't be that and hard. There's, and there's another game scheduled there next week, I think, a night game scheduled there. Right. And and they're obviously not going to do anything about the crap lights. No. I mean, as, as you say, it's 2018. Get everyone to bring their torches, or park your cars around the ground <laughs> and turn your lights on. <laughs> Menzies, when his prime minister used to do that at Princess yeah, Park, he stay at a Rolls special Royce. area for him. Yeah. Imagine if you did that now as a politician, the oh, crap yeah. you'd get. Oh, yeah, exactly. Poor politicians. <laughs> uh, too Long in the Bush wrote in, why don't girls like me? Possibly because you call yourself Too Long in the Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I think also asking that question never helps. Yeah. People don't really like self-pity. Yeah. Go on, go on The Bachelorette, Too Long in the Bush, that'll... <laughs> That'll fix it. You'll, you'll learn a few things. You're absolutely about yourself. right. No, er, like no, everyone's life who's had problems, it's always been fixed by going on a reality TV. Yeah, if, if you yourself, you lack self awareness to that degree, <laughs> go on telly and everything will be sorted. For and you. everyone will point out your flaws for free. Uh, Michael Barbaro wrote, "Are you content with your number of toes?" I don't even know how to approach <laughs> that question. Well, you'd always like more. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Oh, I've always thought the grass is always greener, but in this instance, I'm happy with 10. Right. 
10 will do me. Ten, you're happy with 10? Happy with 10. Yeah, oh, we've settled that once for all. Thanks, Michael. Uh, now, we need to correct a grave injustice yeah, or grave oversight, historical oversight. We missed a couple of announcing winners of T-shirts. Yeah. So... Um, I'm going to get in contact with those people. Okay. Uh, there's just a couple and send yeah, those out. There's a few cool. T-shirts. There's a, I will admit there is a little bit of a backlog because I had to get a few more printed, but they are coming to people. Right. I've got everyone's names. It's not like okay. I so forget. Let's, let's not forget today. Who do yeah. you like today? Uh, well, do you have a preference? I'm, I'm actually leaning towards red and blue. Yeah. Do you think in games at Icon Park, the team that wins the toss, should kick with the light. Well, th- I like the favouritism because it's called red and blue. Yeah. That's all you really need to. That's a pretty to... clever question, I think. Uh, all right, red and blue. So if you uh, if you thought, well, I should have won a t- won a t shirt, or I got announced, haven't got it yet. Yeah, they are coming. Yeah. So there you Nicely go. Done. All sorted. Um, well, let's hope uh, we have got Jail Teague in tonight. Yeah, who's playing tonight? Oh, I knew you'd I ask me that remember. the minute I said it. Yeah, I can't remember who's playing tonight. Is it? Bulldogs be, tonight? Be something exciting. Um, Collingwood? They haven't played yet. He's <laughs> just naming to He's yeah, just plucking names out of the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who is it? I'm going to go onto the... Uh, the special JLT app. Oh, the special JLT app. Yeah, uh, Giants Collingwood. Oh, that should be good. Oh, yeah. Barricking for the Giants there. <laughs> <laughs> the one way to turn everyone into a Giants fan. <laughs> so that's at the University of New South Wales at 7.10. I got any lights Eastern up there. Stand up. Maybe. Yeah. But you might be wanting that to, uh, you know, the, you might be wanting the lights to, to go out in the middle of that one. True. Uh, so, JLT, we'll be back next week. and uh, Maybe tomorrow and maybe one tomorrow. One tomorrow and then... Uh, Probably Monday. And then but Monday. So people can't complain. They're, they're, I'm hoping we'll you're swing getting, the needle from inundated. you're not doing enough to... You, you're doing too <laughs> much. Get, get, get off. Just... <laughs> We're about quantity, not quality here. <laughs> That's our new approach. Uh, We'll see you later.